Um, today's lecture is going to be a rather important one, and we're going to be introducing a number of new concepts. So it's going to be quite uh, fully loaded, as you might say. And uh, I would you know, encourage you to please pay attention to some of the concepts um, as they will be coming in handy in the next assignment, which is going to be coming out probably on Friday. Okay. Um, and so we're going to be basically uh, in the last lecture, we've spoken about the concept of a linked list. Today, we're actually going to see how we can implement a linked list uh, using Java. Okay. Not using a Java library, but creating one on our own. But before we do that, do that, I'd like to introduce to you a concept which is rather important, which is that of interfaces. Okay. So here is the concept of interfaces, which we'll be talking about. And in order to introduce the concept of interfaces, you've got to understand the general concept of abstraction. Okay. And abstraction, when we talk about abstraction, um, you can understand interfaces as part of that. But you can also understand other aspects of Java, which are, for example, data encapsulation and data validation. Okay, so all of those concepts are part of the concept of abstraction. Once we've understood uh, interfaces, what we're going to be doing today is um, let me get rid of this. Okay. So then we're going to be implementing the linked list, uh, the linked list concept. And we first going to introduce uh, interfaces, uh, as you can see over here. That's going to be called link list int int. Um, in addition, we're going to create two classes which are going to help us in implementing a linked list. The first one is going to be the node itself, and as you can imagine, the node is right at the bottom. We've spoken about a node, so this is going to be an implementation of a node. But that node is going to have special things. It's going to have pointers. It's going to point to another node. So that's how it's going to be different from a, let's say, UNC student class. The second thing we're going to introduce is a linked list. Okay. And this linked list is going to sit on top of the node. And it's going to use the concept of nodes with pointers. And it's going to have, as you can imagine, a head pointer and a tail pointer. Okay. So that's what a linked list is. Essentially, it's a list of a bunch of nodes, but with a head pointer and perhaps a tail pointer. Okay. So we're going to be introducing all three of these. But uh, as I said, before we actually introduce you a linked list, uh, it's important to understand the concept of interfaces as well. Um, once we've done that, we will spend some time looking at how to actually uh, write the methods for insertions and searches. Um, we're not going to look at deletions today, but maybe in a subsequent lecture. So let's start with the concept of abstraction. Now, um, can any of you um, tell me if you've heard the word abstraction or the concept of abstract? And what do you understand from that? And this may not be at all in the concept in the context of computer science and maybe in literature or some other uh, you know, everyday uh, term. What do people understand when I say something is abstract? Or have you heard of that term before? Yes? Yeah. Right, exactly, exactly. So when you talk about an abstract, uh, you, you're presenting, let's say you're presenting the abstract of a paper, right? So if some of you have written a paper, it generally starts with sort of a summary, which is the abstract. Okay, and that gives you a high level view of the paper without providing a lot of the details. Okay, so it's sort of the 30,000 foot of uh, view of, 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 the, of the concept. So that's basically what abstraction is. It basically tries to simplify things. All right, so the idea is to simplify things. So when you talk about abstraction, you also come across the concept of layers. All right, so you can say that, well, this is the, the highest layer is the highest level of abstraction. Okay, as you can see over here, this is the highest le level of abstraction, and then you can go down, and you can go down to a lower level of abstraction, and you can keep going down and down and down. All right, so there is no fine limit. Okay, so um, let's take a look at some examples. So let's think about driving a car. All right, so when you're driving a car, 
uh, you generally, as a user, working at the highest level of, of abstraction. What does that mean? You as a user don't need to know how the engine works. There's more speed on it, right? You don't know. You don't need to know how the electrons and the protons inside the car, inside the engine, are actually interacting, right? They're at the molecular level. You don't need to know that. All you need to know is at your level of abstraction, how do you actually run a car? Okay, how, how do you operate a car? And so um, you may only need to know a few things about the car, right? So typically you need to know how the steering wheel works, how the brakes work, how, how the, you know, the accelerator works, and a few other things. Okay? But if you were uh, a mechanic, okay, then you would work at a lower level. So a mechanic is no good if, it, if they don't know how to actually open the engine up and work with the engine and to be able to figure out what's wrong with the car. And if you're a physicist, you need to know how the electrons and protons are working, right? So you need to know just not at the engineer's level or the technician's level, but you need to actually know what's going on at the molecular level, all right? Now, think about a computer scientist, right? So for, for us, uh, we start the highest level of, of abstraction is basically at the flowchart level, okay? So you have an algorithm, you see the flowchart, and you see where it starts, where it ends, or what is the data that is being fed to the algorithm, and how does it very broadly work as a, you know, from, from a human point of view, how does it actually work? And that may be good enough if you are trying to explain your code to a, to a user. Okay? So if you have a subscriber or you have a client, and you try to explain how your code works at a very high level, that may be good enough for the client. But as a computer scientist, you need to go down the level of abstraction, right? You need to work at your level, which is basically at the programming level. So all of us here to, uh, in this course are working at this level of abstraction, right? So we are basically trying to understand how the code works. But we're not working at a, a lower level, right? So there could be a, even a lower level which is basically where perhaps an electrical engineer or an electronics engineer would be working, right? They would be working at, at trying to figure out, well, how does the computer actually work? How does the signals go from the CPU to the RAM to the hard disk and so on, okay? But that's not our level of abstraction. We are working at the programming language. And there could be other levels as well. So in between, you could have assembly language and, and so on. And so it's not just three levels, it's actually, umpteen levels, right? But I'm making it simple here. So um, now let's talk, look at, as I said, uh, in, in terms of abstraction, we're going to look at several ways in which abstraction is useful for us. So the first, uh, first concept is that of data encapsulation. Okay. What do we mean by data encapsulation? So this is something that we've hopefully already seen. So um, let's say that you, with the user application, and we're working with the UNC uh, student class, and we want to change some fields. So, so far, what we've been doing is directly from the user application, directly changing the contents, the fields of the UNC students. Okay, so what, how do we do that? We simply said, well, we have an object, and we can access a particular field using name. And we can simply assign it to something, some value. So this is how we were actually taking in data from the user and assigning it to a particular field. Now, let's say that the UNC student um, class doesn't want the user application to be messing around with its field. Okay. An analogy to the car is that let's say that you have created, you've made a car, you're the car manufacturer, uh, you don't want the user to be going in into the engine and changing some of the data. So for example, um, you know, there's something called an odometer, right, inside a car, which keeps track of how many miles you've driven that car. Now, you as a user are not supposed to be able to change that, right? You can't change a 200,000 mile car to be 20,000 and sell it for new, right? You can't do that. But at the mechanics level, they can, right? Or maybe at the engineer's level, they can actually go in and change the odometer. But you as a user can't do that. So the same thing over here 
is that as a user application, you, you may not want the user to be able to change certain fields. Okay, you may not want, for example, if there's a social security number for the, for, the, for the user, you may not want every application to be able to change or even see the student's social, social security number. Okay, so how do we make sure that that data is kept private? Well, we've already seen how we can do that, right? So you've seen these access levels that we saw earlier. Okay, so the default, which is what we're using so far, basically said that our fields can be accessible, uh, not just within the class, but also within the package. So every other application within the package, which could be the user application, can actually access the fields. Now, if you want to control that, what we can simply do is in front of the field, we can simply specify private, okay? And that would ensure that other package, other classes within that package can not, not only see it, but well, can't change it, but not, they can't even see it, okay? Unless you give them the rights. So here, what we can do is we can change the field names, okay? So here we had the first name, last name, and so on. And you can set them all or some of them to private. What that would do is make sure that only within the UNC student class, you have full control. And nobody else can actually see those fields, okay? So if you try to do this and you try to create an object and you try to say st.fname, that would give you an error, all right? So that would, it would not allow you to do that. So the question is then, if I want to set the first name and the last name and so on, how do I do that? Well, there is a protocol for that, and that is called using setters and getters. Okay, so that's a generic name. Basically, what that means is within the UNC class, now you write a bunch of methods which will allow users to be able to set fields and get fields. Okay, and perhaps change them and so on. Okay, or, as I said, set fields. So here is an, uh, and I'll show you an example in a few minutes. So you could have, for example, um, a method inside the UNC student class which says set name. It will take a string as an argument, a first name, and it would simply set the first name field. Okay. And if you as a user application want to get a certain value, you can't directly access it as you were doing it earlier. No, what you'd have to use is the appropriate getter. All right, which basically could be something like a get f name. So this would be a method provided by the UNC student class. And so you as a user would say, well, get f name, and that will hopefully get you the first name. So let's take a look at some of the code. Um, so here is um, the code. So as I said, this is basically your UNC student class. And now what we've done is we've put in a couple of setter, one, one setter and one getter. And so what this, uh, the set F name will do is quite simple. It will simply take the first name and simply assign the F name field to be F name. And you can do that within the class because you have the rights. Okay, it's private. Uh, and if you want to get the first, the F name, then all you need to do is simply return the F name. Okay, so it will be returning a string, and that would simply return the F name field. So that's sort of uh, data encapsulation. So it's ensuring that only the class has access to the fields if they are declared as private. Okay, and so this is an example of a user application. So if you want to set and you want to get uh, the name from the console and then to be able to set it, instead of doing this, you would actually say, st dot set f name and that's how you'd actually assign the user's name to, from the console to that particular field you pass it as an argument to this particular method okay so that's one uh, concept of abstraction so as you can see uh, as i gave you the analogy that the the, the abstraction is also ensuring uh, data encapsulation and privacy so it's not allowing you for every other user to be able to see some data or to be able to change that data. Okay. Now, another example is data validation. So let's say uh, we're putting in 
um, a user application is putting in the is filling in the ID of a, of a UNC student. Now we all know that the UNC student ID comprises of nine digits, right? Uh, I've used a simpler example where I'm assuming that uh, it can comprise of anywhere between three digits to nine digits. Okay. So what you could have is data validation within that setter. Okay. So let's say you have a set ID. You're providing a set ID method inside your UNC student class. And what that does is it takes an ID and then it sets it. But before it sets it, it actually validates it. What does that mean? It simply checks whether it's in the right range. So a user can't just arbitrarily, for example, put in a minus one as the as the ID number. All right, they have to uh, abide by certain uh, requirements. And so what this is doing is it has a small loop. It has a small uh, check and it says that if the ID is greater than ninety nine, which means it has to be at least three digits long, I'm going to accept that and I'm going to return a true. So this is going to return a true or a false. And if that is not the case, I'm going to say, well, ID must be at least three digits or some other um, you know, useful response to the user so that they know that what mistake are they making in terms of specifying the ID value. And you're going to return a false, which means that basically it wasn't able to set that particular ID. So these are examples, again, of abstraction where you're trying to not only uh, have some kind of privacy, but we're also doing data validation. Okay. So now let's talk about the next major concept, which is interfaces. Okay. Now I've already spoken about what an interface is for a car. Okay. So you can imagine that uh, you are a car manufacturer and you want to ensure that all car manufacturers on the Ford, Volkswagen, what have you, they all have the, some required interfaces, right? And so they all have steering wheels, which work in a certain way. They all have brakes. They all have accelerators. Let's say we starting with these three minimum uh, interfaces, okay? So what the car, the standards body for cars, what they could do is create an interface, which is simply sort of like a dummy car, okay? And that dummy car would simply say, well, here are the three things that every car must have. Okay, they can make a plastic version of a car, right? And that ship that to all the car manufacturers. And every car manufacturer would say, well, here is the car. Okay, so it's supposed to have a steering wheel and it's supposed to work. It may have some documentation with it and it says, well, here's how the steering wheel is supposed to work. If you press the accelerator, it's just supposed to uh, go fast. If you press the brakes, it's supposed to go slow. Okay, fairly simple. So that piece of uh, you know, that dummy car, when we talk about computer science, is going to be a piece of code. And that code is going to call, be called an interface. So it doesn't actually implement the class, but it simply gives an outline of what that class is supposed to implement. Okay, so let's take a look at some more details. And now this is just a flashback. So remember, uh, we said there is also something called interfaces, and this is a reference type. It's not a class. It's a separate reference type, okay? So let's talk about an interface, okay? So here, as I said, there's an example of, um, of the car example, where you as a, as a human are the user, and uh, there could be different car manufacturers, there could be Honda, there could be Ford, and they're all going to be given the same interface, okay? And now these car manufacturers are going to implement that interface, okay? And that interface is simply a blueprint, something very simple. All it says is you're supposed to implement a steering wheel, a brake, and an accelerator, okay? But the actual details of how it's implemented by Ford versus Honda could be very different, right? And they could also have additional interfaces. So they could have some really fancy interfaces, like, you know, you want to be able to uh, you know, have heating on your, on your seats and your steering wheel and so on, that might be optional, okay? But those could be additional interfaces. But they could be, but your, your interface specifies the minimum requirement for a car. So if you want to call your object a car, it must implement these three minimum interfaces. It can do more, 
but these three minimum interfaces must be supported and they must comply with the specifications. Okay. Um, so, so this is basically the actual class is going to be sitting over here. So the class is actually going to implement the interface and the interface is going to be something really simple. It's not going to have any real code. All it's going to say, well, this is how it's supposed, these are the, the, the interfaces that are supposed to be there. So let's take a look at now creating a linked list and we're going to use um, an interface, okay? So we're piling up concepts, okay? So you have to be uh, on top of things. So let's start. And I said, we're going to be talking about two classes. This is the first class, this is a node. Now this node is going to be a little different from other classes that we've seen because now it needs to have some content as well as a pointer to the next node. Okay, that's what we said when we said we, we're implementing a linked list, it comprises of, of nodes as well as pointers to next nodes. Okay. So let's say that you are creating a node and the values that you're putting in are simply integers. So let's make our life simple. They're not strings, they're not first and last names and so on. They're simply integers. Okay. So uh, it's going to have a field called value and that's defined as a four byte integer. But now we also need to have a pointer to the next node. Okay. Now, how do you create a pointer to another node? That's not totally obvious. And I don't know how people have done it, perhaps uh, in other um, languages, you've done it differently. But let's say, any, any ideas how would you do it in, in, in Java? Yeah. Okay. So how do you think that works? Because this is absolutely right. So what we're doing is we're saying node, and then we get specifying a field name. Okay. And we're calling that field name next node an underscore just to make sure that it's recognized as a field name okay so now it has two field names it's got a value and it's got a next node now that next node has been declared as a node just like the gentleman mentioned but is it a full node does it have would underscore next node be all the details of the node no it will simply be a pointer or the address of the next node. Okay, so this is something which isn't quite obvious. When you, when you look at this and you say, well, next node is being declared as a node, so it should have all the details of that node. No, that's not how it's, it, it, what it means. What it basically means is that the, the variable next node in memory is simply going to occupy the amount of space required to specify an address and that could be the four bytes or eight bytes okay so this could be uh, this particular field would be four bytes right this particular field would be either four bytes or eight bytes depending on whether it was a 32-bit operating system or a 64-bit operating system okay so that's how and that's simple that's how you create a pointer to a next node Okay, and why did you specify node over here? Because this is a class. So it's sort of like a recursive definition. Okay, so you're specifying a class, and within the class, you're saying, hey, there's a pointer, and it points to another object, which will eventually point to another object of that same class. Okay. Now, the next thing that we typically do is specify a constructor. Okay, we don't have to do that, that may not be required. In the interface, well, this, we haven't spoken about an interface yet, but, but that's not really required. But let's say that you do want to have a constructor. So here's an example of a constructor. And all that says is that if you want to create a node, you need to specify, you need to um, instantiate it with a value, with an integer value. And what we're going to do is we're going to specify the, the value, the field, is going to have whatever integer that you passed, that's going to be the contents of the fur of that particular node. And the next node pointer is going to be initialized to a null. 
Okay, the next node pointer is going to be initialized to a null because we really don't know if there is a next node or not. So we starting with a constructor, it creates an object, it puts in the value of that object, and it creates a, a null pointer to the next node. Okay, so that's basically what the, the lowest level, the, the node class. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an interface. Okay, the interface is going to basically interact with the user programs, as I said, and it's going to say, well, what are the things that I can do with this linked list? Okay, just like if you were creating a car, the interface was, you know, the three things, you know, accelerator, brakes, and steering wheels. Well, here, basically, we're going to say, well, these are the things that a linked list is supposed to be able to do. And as a computer scientist, how do we implement those things? Well, we implement it in terms of methods, right? So we will say that a linked list is supposed to be able to support those methods. Right. So those interfaces are going to be implemented as methods. Okay. So let's take a look at um, an example. And so um, the way you specify an interface is using the special keyword interface. Just like when we specified a class, we said class, public class, and class name. So an interface is another reference type. It's not a, it's not a class. It's, uh, it's a blueprint for a class. Uh, and you use the special keyword interface, and then you specify the name of the interface. Now I'm going to call this a list for linked list, and then int just so that you can understand that it's not the actual class, but it's simply the interface, the blueprint of that class. Now the next question is, uh, what methods would you want to have in a linked list? And you could have, uh, and you've seen. Uh, you know, the kinds of things that we've been doing with linked lists in the previous lecture. So any ideas, what kinds of methods, and this, these would be, these could be ca categorized as the minimum, and then you could have additional, all right? So what would be the minimum set of in, uh, methods that one would want to have in a linked list uh, for every linked list that implements this particular interface? Any, any ideas? Yeah? Add and remove, yeah. So you'd be able to add a particular node and be able to remove a node. What else would you want to have? That is, those would certainly be the minimum. Yeah. Um, any other uh, methods that you'd want to have for every class that implements a linked list? Yeah. You have to speak a little louder. The, in, deleting the entire list, yeah. Now, the question is, would you want to um, make that a requirement or should that be optional? Because another way of deleting the entire linked list is to delete each one of those nodes. So if, if I were to suggest, I would make that optional so that we don't overburden you know, the actual implementer of the class. Okay? So you want to make the, the interface a little simple as well. You don't want to make it too complex because then if you, if you make the, the, the car interface so complex that it has to support all these 100 features, well, what about the low-cost manufacturers? They would never be able to build a car, all right, because it must have all of these fancy features as well. So you want to make the, the interface a little simple and to make it just comprise of the minimum methods or the min, minimum things that the linked list must support. So, uh, yeah, but that is a good idea, all right? So, but we'll keep that for optional. Any other thoughts on what you want to implement? Yeah. Okay, right, very good. So you want to be able to get the head and, and the tail. All right, very good. Uh, keep going. What, what else? What other methods would you want to have in, in this? In every, um, um, and if I were to suggest, if one of those, if you want to make one of those optional, which one would you make optional? I mean, not part of the, by optional, it means it won't be part of the interface. Okay, yeah, because you have to have the head. Otherwise, if you don't have the head, you don't know where the, the linked list is. But with the head, you can at least go down. The tail would be nice. Maybe you want to use that somehow. Okay. What, what other methods would you want to have? 
anal interest. So we've gone, we've been able to get the head. We can uh, delete, add a node. We can delete a node. What else would you want to do? Yeah. Modify. So you would be able to specify that if this particular integer, let's say, exists, then you search for it and modify it to a new value. All right. And that sort of also implies that we need, should we be able to be able to uh, do a search as well? Okay. So you may also want to be able to do a search. So you want to be able to see, well, does this integer uh, or this particular object exist inside that linked list? Okay. So these are the kind of things that you would want to have inside the interface. So here are uh, my set of lists. So I've, so as the lady mentioned, we want to get head, uh, get tail. I've also mentioned that inside the interface. So that means that all linked lists must have a tail pointer, uh, an insert node. Okay. Now, as you can see, um, in the interface, you want to be able to provide some documentation which specifies how that particular method is supposed to work. Okay, if you don't do that, then you know the actual person who creates that class is going to be confused. So you could have something. So so there are several things that you need to specify when you're specifying the interface. First of all, you need to specify the name. Okay, so we get, we're calling it get head with an uppercase H. Uh, we're also specifying what it's supposed to return. So we're saying that it's supposed to return a node, which basically means it's supposed to return an entire node or just a pointer? Just a pointer. Okay, so it's just going to return a pointer to that head node. Uh, similarly, the get tail is going to return a pointer to the tail node. Okay. The insert, now we're also specifying some details. Okay, so not only are we specifying what it's supposed to return, but we're also specifying what are the arguments? Okay, so we're saying that when you're inserting a node, you're going to take an integer value. Okay, and then that particular value is going to be used inside the class that implements that interface. Uh, delete node, um, you didn't have to return a boolean, but it'd be nice if the delete node makes gives you a, a true or false. And in case it wasn't able to find that particular integer value that you passed it, it should return a false. Okay, so that you know that you know you were trying to delete that particular integer, but it didn't find it, and so it returned a false. And um, if it did, uh, if it was able to delete that node, it would return a true. Okay, so those are the specifications that you can hopefully read over there. Uh, now I've got two searches. Okay, and now, as you recall, when you have the same method name, but different arguments, then those are examples of overloaded method methods. Okay, so this is an example of overloaded methods. Um, what does overloaded mean? Basically, what you have here is an example where you have two methods with the identical name, they both search. And the only way they differ well, several ways that they differ. First of all, and more importantly, they differ in the number of arguments. Okay, so here uh, you have three arguments, and in this case, you have two arguments. So when you call a particular search method and you specify a certain number of arguments, that's how the compiler knows which particular method is supposed to be executed. Okay, that's the only way it knows. And that's determined at runtime. Uh, runtime or comp compile time, actually, yeah. Um, so, and here um, you're also specifying, in this case, uh, I'm specifying different return values. So, this particular search is returning a node. So, here, this is the simple one. All it does is it takes a node, starting node. So, basically, it's not going to start at the head, it's going to start at a particular location inside the linked list. And then it's going to search for a value, which is specified as an integer, and it's going to search subsequently downwards in the, in the linked list, and it finds it, then it's going to return a pointer to the node. If it doesn't find it, it's going to return a null. Okay, so, that, so this null is very useful. 
As you can see, when you return a null, it means that you weren't able to find that node. Uh, this particular uh, search, the overloaded search, uh, what this does is it's, you know, it is just, you know, I came up with something and I, and I said, well, let's, let's do the following. I'm going to not only specify the node, um, but I'm also going to, and, and the integer, but I'm also going to specify an integer i, which is initially, let's say if you're passing the head node, then int i is going to be zero. And then if it finds the node, it's not going to return a pointer to the node, it's going to return its index location. So if you found it at the head, the index will be zero. If it was the second node, the index would be one. And if it was the last node, it, the index is going to correspond to the length of the link list. So it's just some arbitrary um, uh, you know, definition of a search that I came up with. You could come up with your own search definitions. Okay, You could create your own interfaces and you could say, well, this is how I want the search to work. So let's take a look at now actually implementing uh, linked lists and to be able to implement those particular interfaces. So now we have the user program, okay, which we haven't really shown you yet. Uh, and then we've specified the interface. So we've specified this in complete detail. We have specified the node in complete detail. Now let's specify the actual linked list. Okay. Now the linked list, uh, there could be multiple implementations of the linked list. And all of them could be implementing this interface. For example, you could have a linked list which is unordered. You could create another linked list which is ordered, but it could still be implementing the same interface. Okay, so an unordered and ordered, just think about it. Uh, could these methods be implemented on? Does it really matter whether it's ordered or unordered? These interfaces should work, right? They should work if a, if a linked list is ordered or if a linked list is unordered. They should work in both cases. I mean, if you want to get head, that should work. Get tail should work. Insert a node. But the insert node functionality would be very different if it was inserting in an ordered linked list versus unordered, right? In an ordered, it would have to actually figure out exactly where to put it and then insert it in the appropriate location. In an unordered linked list, it could just insert at the beginning of the linked list or at the end or some arbitrary value. Okay, So the actual implementation uh, will depend on the particular class. So now what I'm doing is I'm calling a linked list, which I'm calling a list. And this is an, I'm, I'm telling you that this is basically an unordered and it's also something called singly linked list. We haven't spoken about a doubly linked list yet, but I will talk about that later. Okay, but more importantly, this is an example of a unordered linked list. So let's see how we would actually implement that. So uh, these are the methods that we need to implement. So all of these methods must be implemented if uh, you would actually um, not get a compile time error. Okay. And a quick question over here is, which of these do you think is the most difficult to implement? Get net, uh, sorry, get head, get tail, insert node, delete node, search, and there are two versions of search. So any, any thoughts? Uh, yeah. And which one of these searches do you think would be more difficult? Yeah, this is probably going to be more difficult than this because uh, it's got it's got to you know work with the index as well. Um, any other thoughts? Anybody who's got some intuitive idea about how complex things can be? Do you want to give an answer, or you just okay? Um, so it so happens if you get some more experience, you realize that deletion is often the most difficult part of data structures. Um, and you'll understand why as you go forward. And the basic reason is that when you're deleting, you have a lot of the what are called boundary cases. Okay, what do we mean by boundary cases? Boundary cases are basically the scenarios 
when what happens if you are deleting and it's the only node, right? What happens if there are two nodes and so on? What happens if you are deleting in a large linked list and the node that you're deleting is at the end of, is right at the end or it's right at the beginning? So you have to change the pointers. So there are a lot of boundary cases which are special cases, okay? By boundary cases, I mean the special cases. So uh, delete often is, is complicated because there are a lot of special cases. And if you don't implement all the special cases, at some point when, you, when you're executing your code, you will have a runtime error, okay? And those are really difficult to figure out sometimes. So let's take a look at some really simple, um, uh, the simple aspects of it. So let's say that we now first, uh, first of all, we're implementing uh, a, a list. And the way we say that this particular a list class, we're creating a class which is of, of type, which is a, an a list. And the way we specify that it's going to implement a particular interface is, a, is that we use a special keyword. Okay, that special keyword is called implements. Okay, so the earlier special uh, keyword was um, was a while back, and that was where did, where did we go with that? Somehow that dis disappeared. So anyway, that that was called an interface. Okay, yeah, so it was right here. So when you're creating an interface, you use a special keyword called interface. And that is actually specifying just the blueprint, okay? And um, this is what the interface was. And then, and then you're using or you're implementing that interface, you simply use this, this special keyword called implements, okay? So when you say a list implements this particular interface, which you've already created, then now the question is, my first question is, and here is just a, a quick review of, you know, this is the interface, which I've just shown over here. So what would be the methods that you have to implement? That's a simple question. What methods must a list implement in order not to have a compile time error? What methods must it in, implement? Yes. Exactly. So it has to implement one, two, three, four, five, six methods. And if one of those is missing, you would not be able to compile this code. Okay. And those methods have to have exactly these properties. So they must be returning the same data type. They must be accepting the same argument type and the same number of arguments. Okay. If those things are not there, then you'll simply have a compile time error. So the methods is simple. Um, those must be implemented. They may not, they don't necessarily have to work, all right? So you could just start and have some kind of a dummy um, method which simply returns a null or ret returns a null for node value or returns, returns a zero for an integer, but the compile error, compile, you won't get a compile time error, okay? It would work. I mean, it won't do anything useful, but it would not give you a compile time error. What about the fields? What kind of fields do you think you need to implement? And now this is up to you. I mean, you could have a whole bunch of fields, but what do you think would be appropriate field names to have in this linked list? So now you're sitting on top of the nodes. Okay, so node has the actual value. So the linked list is not the actual values. It's simply comprised of a bunch of nodes. Okay. So what kind of field names would you want to have in the linked list? Well, think about, um, think about the following. These are the, the interface, these are the methods that you're supposed to implement, right? So when you say get head, um, are you going to return that? Are you going to return the head? You must have a field which has a pointer to the head, okay? Similarly, if you want to return the tail, you must have a field which is a pointer to the tail. And that may be all that you need, okay? So you may just have two fields within this linked list 
the first of them simply points to the head and the last of them points to a tail and you're good to go okay that's essentially what those are the fields that must be there in the linked list itself now let's talk about some more details of the linked list now remember as i said it must implement certain methods so you must implement a get head method you must implement a get tail method okay now get head should be fairly simple what is it supposed to do well you would declare a method and just ignore this for right now it's declaring a method called get head uh, it returns a node you're making it public and it's simply returning the head field okay that's all it's doing when you call the particular get head method on this linked list it's simply going to return this particular field okay similarly when you're doing a get tail all it's going to do it's returning a tail so this is sort of like a getter okay it's simply getting certain values yes okay so the override is something that the compiler puts in it's not something that you actually explicitly put in but if you write this piece of code and you compile this what you'll see is that the compiler and that's why it's got a different color the compiler will automatically put that in it's sort of um, an indication that basically this particular code overrides anything any code that might exist inside the actual class now you, you might say well the, the inside the sorry the interface okay so the interface can at times have some content of those objects some default methods which implements some of these okay and we're going to see that later on so just ignore that for the, for the time being okay so we, we're going to talk about over, over, override a little bit later um so these two are fairly straightforward uh get head and get tail all right now let's talk about um the constructor okay what do you think the constructor should do and we're basically saying that the constructor i'm basically saying that i'm creating a constructor and that takes in a value so now think about it what do you think that you support the constructor is supposed to do with that value so the constructor is taking it's not it's not taking um it's accepting it's expecting a value and that value is it's going so it's not going to create an empty linked list okay it's going to create when you give it a value it's going to create a, a linked list which which consists of a single node and the value of that node is going to be what you pass in to the constructor okay so simply creating a linked list which comprises of a single node and that node has has a value that you're passing it over here okay so now my question is uh what should be in the body of this what how would you initialize this linked list right now the linked list is completely empty what you're supposed to do is create a node and set the value of that node to be the value that you pass in to the constructor. So, any thoughts on what should be the contents without clicking forward? Any thoughts? Yeah? Yeah. The, the get tail okay so basically get tail is saying well i have a field i have a field which is supposed to be already there okay so it's supposed to be you know it's supposed to be maintained and if that field has an appropriate value at any given time it's simply going to return that okay so it's not going to actually set that it's simply going to say hey i have a field it's supposed to point to the tail 
So I'm simply going to return that. Okay. And similarly for the get head, it's saying that there is a field, it's supposed to have some valid value, uh, and I'm going to simply return that. Okay. So coming back to my question, yeah. So how would you actually do, do this? Yeah. Yes, yes. So as you go in into the code, you're going to be establishing that. Okay. And that brings us exactly to my question, which is the constructor. Okay. The constructor is the first time you're actually going to be creating an object of type linked list. So that's where you're supposed to be setting the initial values, the default values of the head and the tail pointers. Right here. Okay. So now, can you guess what the contents would be? Yes. Okay. Now, one of the reasons why I normally don't give out on my slides beforehand is because I want people to think. But all of you guys have been asking me to give the slides out beforehand. So I've given you the slides beforehand. But uh, the idea is for you guys to think. Now, if you are um, thinking, and that's fine. And if you're looking at the, the code ahead and giving me the answer, that's also fine. But I would prefer if you don't look at the slides ahead and uh, try to answer it based on, you know, your, your understanding. So you're absolutely right. Okay. And I'm not judging you. Okay. So I'm simply, so, so there's the answer, which is basically saying what we're we supposed to do is first of all, you're supposed to create a new node. Okay. Because this linked list is empty. So you're going to create a new node. How do you do that? You use the new keyword. Okay. And you call it on the node class. Now, do you remember what the node class is doing? Let's go back. It's there. Yeah. So the node class was simply taking the constructor was simply taking an integer value. Okay. And it was assigning the value to be what was passed. And the next node was supposed to be a null. Okay, so now we're going to call the constructor class of the of uh, we're going to call the constructor of the node class, and we're going to specify this value. Okay, the value that was given to the linked list uh, constructor, and we're going to create a new node with this particular value, and. As a result of that, we're going to get a pointer to that node, and that's going to be assigned to the head pointer. Okay, so this is an important line. Uh, it might take you a little while to figure this out. So basically, in this particular line, line, line number eight, we're doing several things. Number one, we're creating a new node. We are using the constructor of that class to be able to specify the value of that node. And that is going to return us a pointer to that node. And that is being assigned to the head pointer. In addition, because there's only one node in that linked list, the tail has to point to it as well. So now you understand the question that you're now initializing the head and the tail pointers at the time of construction, yes. It's the constructor. So, so, so the constructor is always called when you, when you, you know, you, the first time you're creating that object. If you remember the concept of the constructor, when you create that object, that's when you call the constructor. Yeah, this is only be going to be called one time on that particular object. Okay, yeah. Yes, you could. You could. You you absolutely could. Uh, so there there are multiple ways of you know skinning a cat, as you say. So there there are various ways of, of how you could do this. The way I've done it is the simpler way because what you've suggested is now that depends on a subsequent code which you haven't written. Okay. But, but yeah, you could do it that way as well. So I've simply uh, assigned the head 
and the tail. And now, once the constructor is done, you have a valid linked list, and the field names are also valid. Okay, so now you have a linked list which comprises of a single node, and the head pointer and the tail pointer are both pointing to that particular node. Okay, so now if you're done with that part, now let's think about how would one actually insert a node. Okay, so let's let's put on our thinking caps on and see. Well, how would you insert a node? So it should hopefully be a little bit similar to this, um, but a little different as well. Okay. So without peeking ahead, as I said, how would you um, insert a node? Yeah. Exactly. So you, you would start off something very similar. So you want to create a new object because now you're creating a new node. Very good. What next? Okay, so so that's one line. Fine. You now you've created a node, it has the right value. What next? Yeah, so it depends on where you're inserting it, right? Now this is unordered. So you could insert anywhere you want. And which what would you prefer? Inserting at the head of the linked list or the tail of the linked list? Tail, okay. So uh, because we have a tail pointer, it, you could you could because you have pointers on both sides, you could do either one. But let's say that you want to insert the tail. So here's the code. So basically what this does is exactly what was suggested. So you're creating a new node, okay, just like this over here, okay. It's returning us a pointer, okay, and um, we're saying that node is of type node, okay, which we didn't have to do because head over here was already declared as of type node. So we're creating a new variable, but we must also specify the type of that variable, and that's why we need to specify node. But this is going to be a pointer to a node. And then in the second part, we're actually instantiating this. Okay. So in the second part, we're instantiating it, we're getting a pointer to that, and then we're assigning it to this variable called lowercase node. Okay. Now that we have a pointer, uh, we're going to do something very similar. Um, and since we're inserting it at the end, so it's sort of like inserting this over here. Okay. So let's say we're putting in some value which is 20. So now what we want to do is to be able to point this to the new node. And you want to be able to make sure that this is not pointing anywhere. It's a null. So um, this portion is already done. So this, when you create a node, it's already the next pointer is a null. Okay. But now what we've got to do is we've got to uh, reassign this pointer. Okay. Because now the tail. Two, the two things that we have to do, we have to change this value over here. Okay, we've got to change this value to point over here. And we've got to change the tail to point to the new node that we've created. Two things. Right? So the first thing what we're doing is we're changing the tail to point to node. Okay, so what that does is it takes this and it points to the new node that we just created. And the second thing is that we, well, before that, we're taking the tail and we're saying the next node over here, this pointer has to also point to node. Okay. So both the tail's next node has to be pointing to the new node and the tail pointer itself has to point to the new node. Okay. Yes. So the, the previous node, which was the tail node, its next node pointer is now being changed. How are we changing that? We're changing that over here. So we're taking the tail node pointer, and then we accessing the next, we using dot next node. So we accessing its next node field, okay? 
remember the the um, the node had two fields the value and the next node so what we're doing is we're accessing the next node field of the last node and we're assigning it to point to the new node okay yeah We can't. <laughs> yeah. So you lost a reference to that. Unless we had something called a W linked list, which we'll talk about later on. Okay. But the only way that you could actually continue to point to this is through some elaborate mechanism of going through the entire link list, starting from the header and going down, and you know, something complicated like that. Okay. But yeah, you're right. We don't have access to the tail point, to the previous tail anymore. And hopefully we don't need it. Okay, so this is the uh, the code for the sim uh, the, the insert node. Okay, hopefully uh, everybody's following this. If there's any confusion, this is the time to ask. Yes. The, what the constructor is doing over here. Okay, so uh, is there any particular part of it which you don't understand, or should I just explain the whole thing again? The, the tail okay so basically what this is doing is you're assigning so this is a variable this is a field variable okay so this corresponds to this particular variable over here which is actually a field so basically what we're doing over here we're saying that we need to set the tail field to point to the head now why do we need to do that so let me explain this okay so initially we didn't have a linked list. Okay, now we're creating a linked list. The way we're creating the linked list is over here, we're creating a new node. Okay, the new node has got two fields. One is underscore val, and the other is underscore next node. Okay, what we're doing over here, once we've we've uh, created this particular node the constructor is going to set the the value to be equal to let's say this value let's say we're passing it some number let's say 10. what this is doing is specifying the value field to be 10. that's being done by the constructor of the node class okay um, and the constructor of the node class is also going to set this to null now, at the linked list level, what we have to do is we have to manage our own fields. And our fields are called head and tail. Okay. So now what we have to do is we've got to set the head tail to point over here. And in addition, the tail is also going to point to the same node. Why is that? Because there is only a single node in the linked list. And both the head and the tail are now pointing to the same node. Okay, it's sort of like having uh, this this linked list above, except that you don't have all of these. So what would happen over there is that the tail would also point to the same node as the head was pointing to. Okay, so what we're doing over here is we're simply saying, well, the tail field is going to point to the head. Okay, the head already is pointing to the new node, and so now we assign the tail to point to the head as well. Does that answer your question? Okay, good. All right. So, um, so any any other questions? This is uh, perhaps a little complicated. This particular slide. Yes. Uh, say that again. What, what do you uh, just repeat the question again? Yeah. No. When, when you're writing the code, this is exactly what the code is, right? Now, where would it get the actual value? It's coming in over here. When you call this program inside some program, uh, inside a user program, that's where you actually specify the value. And if that's not clear, let me jump to a particular example. 
Okay, so I can actually show this to you inside the linked list. Okay, so here, here's the actual code. So here is the, the node. Okay, so this has the actual uh, value uh, field. It has a next node. Okay, uh, here is the interface. Okay, so this is exactly what I've shown you. Here is the implementation class, which I've called a list. Okay, now what this is doing is it's implementing the list interface. All right, and um, this is the constructor, and this is some of the uh, the methods that we we've been talking about: the get hit, head and get tail, and there's going to be other uh, methods as well, which we'll talk about subsequently. Now let's take a look at an example so that you sort of get a feel for what's going on. So here's an example. And now in this example, what you're doing is in the initial part, uh, I'm going to insert three nodes. I'm going to insert a 10, a 20, and a 15 in a linked list. Okay. So what do I do? So the first thing I do is I'm going to create a new variable called list naturally is going to be of type L list. Okay. And now I'm going to call the constructor of the L list. And the first time I'm going to call it, I'm going to give it a value. Okay. So let's see what happens when I do that. So um, I'm going to debug this program on the debugger. And now it's stopped at line number seven. So at this point, it's executed all the way up to line number six. So let's take a look at the debugger. So um, now what you can see is that um, you have the args field, you have the list, okay? And um, the list basically has, this is the object that we've just created. Where did we create that? This is the list object that we've just created. It's a pointer to a linked list, okay? Now within that object, then naturally the two fields there's the header and the tail so this is the header and this is the tail okay now the constructor has already created the object and you can see that the constructor has already created the node and it's at a particular address at 781 its value is the is the value 10 which is used to create the linked list and the tail is also pointing to the header. Okay, so both of them are pointing to the address 781, and both of them naturally have the same contents because they point to the same uh, same object. Does that answer your question? If you, if you had lots of data, um, yeah, you could do that. I mean, if you, and that's a more complex program. So let's say that you're transferring data, you're doing a data transfer from one program to another program, you could write some kind of a loop which, which does that, but that's not something we, we at yet, okay? Yeah. So uh, that's how we're creating it. Now let's just uh, loop through this and see what happens when we insert uh, another node. So I'm going to go forward and now we've inserted 20. So now you should see that the list has a header and a tail pointer, which are pointing to two different nodes. Okay. The head pointer has, has a value of 10. The head pointers node has a next node field, which is pointing to the next node. And that you can see is the same as the tail pointer. So this is now pointing, the next node is now pointing to the tail. And the tail has a value of 20. Okay. Now let's jump ahead and see what happens if I insert a 15. Okay. So let's insert a 15. So now hopefully a 15 has been inserted. So now you can guess, well, let's, let's take a look. So you have a link list. The header is pointing to uh, node 781 which has a content of 10. The tail is still pointing to the same old object, which has a value of 15. But now the next node of the header 
is pointing to some other node. Okay. And that's the node which is created. Um, no, sorry, I got that wrong. So um, you've actually inserted, not in the middle, but inserted at the end. So um, the next node is the same as earlier, which has the value of 20. But now the next node is, uh, next node's uh, pointer over here is now pointing to the new node, which is just created. And that has a value of 15. Now the tail is pointing to this last node. The head is pointing to the first node. And there's nothing really um, besides the tail point, besides this point over here, there's no additional way to actually access the middle node. Okay. So you can see that every time you're inserting a node, the tail pointer is going to keep on moving. You're inserting at the end and the tail pointer is going to keep on moving. And the previous nodes, the next node, a pointer is going to change. Um, is this making sense or have I lost some of you? Uh, in case I've lost some of you, just you know, rewind this the, the recorded lecture, listen to it until you actually figure this out. And of course, I'll have this code available to you, so you should be able to actually practice with this. 